This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian-approved, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all your holiday to-dos. Too busy with holiday plans to cook, but want to make sure you're eating well? With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. When you're too busy running around to plan lunch, Factor has you covered with lunch to go. Effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go, no microwave required. Head to factormeals.com slash MC911pod50 and use code MC911pod50 to get 50% off. That's code MC911pod50 at factormeals.com slash MC911pod50 to get 50% off. With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Whether your resolution is to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. Say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like delivered right to your door. So you've resolved to actually sit down and eat dinner around the table, but what do you do about those nights when your schedule is packed? Turn to HelloFresh's lineup of quick and easy meals, including their 15-minute recipes designed to help minimize mealtime stress. Every single meal I've had from HelloFresh has had easy-to-follow instructions, fresh ingredients, and when it's done, I feel like I'm out at my favorite restaurant. Go to HelloFresh.com slash MC911free and use code MC911free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash MC911free with code MC911free. The past few weeks, I've played some extremely terrible calls. Calls that make you feel incredibly uneasy or might make you cry or even question your own family members. Just truly horrible stuff. This week, we're doing outrageous. I wish I could say these will be better, but I can't. Wait. Actually, I can. Because the last couple weeks I've played some really terrible stuff, and because it's the week after Independence Day, I was wanting to do some sort of patriotic 911 calls well there's really no such thing that I can think of so instead of doing something like that I'll stick to the whole outrageous 911 calls theme but instead of shocking in the normal sense I'll play some of the stuff I found that most of you would never think anyone would call 911 for but believe me people call 911 for stuff like this almost every single day to create a different version of a current lyric, these people didn't understand the assignment. Welcome back to Music City 911. Now these calls, they're things I've just found around the internet. I don't have any info on some of them at all. So you'll just have to take them as they are. There won't be any huge details regarding them but I think you'll still be quite entertained by them. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get on to the first one. 911, where is your emergency? I don't have an emergency. I'm just trying to find out who I called to find out the score of the Saturday basketball game that was played in Dayton, Dayton, Ohio. Dayton and Xavier basketball game. Okay, and you're... You're calling 911 for this? Is what? You're calling 911? I don't know who to call. I've called several places and they keep sloughing me off. I just want to find out a simple basketball score from last Saturday. Okay, sir. I'm not sure who to transfer you to because this is 911 for life or death emergency. Okay. Yes, that just happened. People actually call 911 for stuff like that. They 
they want to know the time, the date, the weather, even what time a movie is going to be playing at a certain theater. It's really incredible that so many people are alive in the world who don't know the reason you would call 911. And to continue with something not really the same at all, but still in the same, I guess you could say, world. Here we go on the next one. Hi, ma'am. Can I help you? Yes. Um, would you tell me how to put batteries in my little fan here? It says I have a double A batteries, and on here says um, one double A plus, and then the bottom says plus double A one. Okay. Now, how do I how do I do that? Did you open it up where the batteries go in? Yes. Okay. I, is there any directions as far as which one? Because do you see where the plus is? I see where um, it's a little round, little round uh, wires. Okay. Are you having trouble putting them in the right way? Yes, I am. I don't know how to put them in. Okay. Well, why don't you try putting them in? Um, make sure that the see the part where the bump is. Right. That should be where it says plus. Plus. Yeah. So wherever it says plus, that should be where the bump is. Okay, and the top one says one double A plus. Okay, does it take one or two batteries? Two. Two batteries? Yes, and the one at the bottom says uh, plus double A one. And the battery uh, has a plus on it. And the other battery has okay. a plus on it. Well, the plus is referring to the side of the battery, like the top part where the bump is. I see. Okay. Put them the, in the same way? Put them in exactly the same way. If that doesn't work, take them out and switch them around and see if that works. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Well, you're so welcome. God bless you. Okay. God okay. bless you, too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, most of the time, if I get a caller asking for something like that, I'll just have to hang up because we're so busy if... It's a nice old lady like that, and she's genuinely wanting some help, and I can do something for her over the telephone. I might actually try to help her on something like that instead of disconnecting. We're under no obligation to do so, but it's helping somebody out. So as long as, in that case, the 911 call taker did not have a bunch of calls backed up, I don't see too much of a fault in that at all. Kind of glad the lady got us some help. Waukesha, please, this is Drake, let me help you. Yeah, hi. Um, I was wondering if you could send an officer over to my place to uh, have somebody physically removed. <laughs> Who do you want removed? Um, just a girl. Okay, who is just the girl? Who is the girl you want removed? Uh, she's sleeping in my bed. and. Okay, was- who is she? Um, her name is, uh... She's in your bed right now? Yeah, and I'm sitting on the couch in the living room talking to you. Okay, how did she get there? Um... Did did she she come home with you, or...? No, I don't think so. I mean, she just fell asleep or something. Well, how did she get into your apartment? How did she get into your apartment and into your bed? While we were talking, and... Okay, did you bring her home with you? Well, I assume so. <laughs> you there? Yes. Do we know who she is? Uh, her name is, um... Oh, what is her name? Um... Did you just meet her tonight, or is she a friend, or...? She's a neighbor. She's a neighbor? Okay. Yeah. Do we know what her name is? Um, the heck is her name? Um... I don't know. Okay. Don't... What is your name, sir? Huh? What is your name? I would prefer not to say. Okay, have you both been drinking tonight? Well, I have. Okay. But I don't I don't I don't know about her. I she's just snoring away like a train. She's snoring. Okay. So 
You don't know how she got in there, though. Say it again. You don't know how she got into the apartment? Well, I'm just saying that we're hanging out and stuff like that, and then... And then she just decided to go to bed? Well, pretty much. Okay. And then... And then it's like I'm trying to wake her up, and she won't okay. wake up. And she's snoring like a train? Snoring like a train. Okay. Is that her? Is that her snoring that I'm hearing? Yeah, she's snoring like a train. Okay, we'll send someone over there. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay. Yeah. Bye. A call like this. Yeah, it happens sometimes. I don't know if you were able to pick up some of the subtleties that I was in that call, but I have a feeling there was a bit of a, let's say, monetary transaction going on there. This may take a bit of explaining. We get calls from people doing what we call vice activities from time to time. Drugs, gambling, and yes, even prostitution. Sometimes a couple of these can be mixed together. Believe it or not, We'll get calls from people who lost money in illegal gambling or were stiffed out of cash when they were trying to buy drugs. Generally, something like this, without explicitly saying it, I'll let them know that if an officer comes out that they, the caller, could be arrested. One of those weird things where they don't want to lose all $20 to their name to someone who was doing something illegal in the first place. But in scenarios like that, they're likely going to lose their money, not get any drugs, and maybe go to jail too. The call we just heard, I've heard similar hundreds of times. They'll generally say they were letting a, quote, friend stay at their place overnight to help them out. When you start to further question them, just like this one, you'll find out that this longtime friend they invited into their house for whatever length of time, they don't know what their name is, or they'll say, Well, all I know her from is her nickname. They'll never flat out say this was a prostitution thing, but chances are that's what it is. I imagine this one's no different. He couldn't easily remember her name, said it was a neighbor that they were just drinking and she managed to fall asleep in his bed. It might not be prostitution, but as I said, I've heard so many calls like this that a lot of times they all have the same kind of template when you start questioning them about it. 911, you need police fire medical? No, I'm, I'm okay, but I am under duress. What kind of help do you need? Well, I need to activate my track phone so I can call another place I can go. You have to call from a different number. You can't call from your track phone. The only number you can call right now is 911 for emergencies only. Uh-huh, but why does the track phone only have this option, okay. the first I, option? Because all phones are 911 enabled. You need to hang up if you don't have an emergency so I can answer the call. Let me tell you something. I'm under extreme duress, extreme, S-O-S, duress, and I need to call out. And I can't help you with dialing out. You're, this is a direct, you're making a direct call to a 911 center for police, fire, and medical emergencies only. I know that, but why does my phone do that? Why, Hang up, and why? you have to call from a different phone to your provider. I need to know. What is a SIM card, and I can't find I can, a SIM card. I can't help you with that, sir. This is 911 for, like I said, police, fire, or medical emergencies. And you want me to, to send move. you a police officer? No, not right now, because I'm trying to activate my phone. But Well, but I can send you a know. police officer if you need help. Being that I've played a lot of calls on the show, I believe in one of my previous episodes a long time ago, I could have played either this one or one just like it. But something like this is worth playing again. This is another one that's hard to believe that we get pretty frequently. I really don't understand the thought process involved when your phone is without service that somewhere along the checklist of things to do is to call 911 and try to have emergency services turn it back on. No, this isn't an emergency. This is not a situation you should be under any kind of duress from. And no, again, it has nothing to do with an SOS situation. If you're ever down on your luck and you can't pay your cell phone bill and it gets cut off, you can always look on your bill to see what the phone number is to get it cut back on. 
that number will work. And if you can't pay it now, do what this operator said and use someone else's phone. Tampa Police, I'm wondering the address of the emergency. Yeah, I, I'm in the airport and I just came back from uh, St. Louis. Uh, my car was, uh, you know, alarmed, but like, you know, right now I'm trying to open up the car. None of my car keys is, was working. So I opened up the front door and the alarm did not go off. So I'm thinking, is there something to be worried about or like, you know, I can straight drive away the car? Okay, so it's your car in... In the temporary airport, in like you know, in uh, in in, uh, in the long term parking. Uh, what do you? So your alarm didn't go off on your car? No, when I try to open up to the to the key, like you know, I open up the door, the door, the door didn't open up. So I tried, I op- opened with the key, the front door, alarm did not go off. So I'm thinking, is there something that I need to be worried about or I can go ahead and say that I have not activated the engine or I'm not trying to start the engine? You haven't tried to start? No, I have not. Shall I try the thing start? Because I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Because Does it look like that your vehicle was broken into or did you think no, your battery's I'm, dead or something like that? Uh, it might be the battery is dead. Do you think I should try running the battery? trying to turn on the battery? I mean, that's completely up to you, sir. Yeah, the car started. Okay, but your alarm didn't go off? The alarm did not go off. That that was surprising. Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure. You might want to get your car checked out, but if it doesn't look like that your vehicle was broken into or anything like that, okay. all, yeah, I I think suggest, it be fine. Yeah, all I suggest is just go get your vehicle checked out. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll thank you. Mm-hmm. A question you should always ask yourself before calling 911 or even a non-emergency police line, if you're unsure you should call or not, can the police help me with my problem? This guy was calling because he says his car alarm wouldn't go off which I think means when he tried to push the button on his key fob, that nothing happened. His car started. He used his key to open the door, but his alarm didn't make a noise. Most police officers are not mechanics. And even in the slim chance that you might get one that is, they still wouldn't be able to help with something like this. This is something fully in line with just going to a mechanic. If you can't fix it at all yourself. So again, You don't call police if you're in a parking lot or parking garage and have a, well, especially when you have a seemingly very minor, possibly mechanical or electrical problem with your vehicle. Hello, yes, um, driving back from Boston to Muddyford, um, following a car that was going over the line more than he was the side he should have been. Um, coming out through Muddyford, coming up towards the African, where the shop end is, and you've got the farm on the side, you went over the, the white line and actually hit the car. Okay, where are you exactly? Ilfricken, we live in Ilfricken. So, coming from Bartsville through Muddyford to Ilfricken. Alright, so, can you give me a landmark near you? <laughs> and that's what happened. I'm, have, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having a little trouble hearing you. I, I, I need to know exactly where you are. What, what road are you on? I'm not on the road. I've come home because I, I followed the man through. Oh, okay. Because he didn't, he didn't stop. No, he didn't stop. He kept going. So I followed him into Africa and he stopped. And I got out the car and I said to him, because he said, oh, that car hit me. I said, no, you didn't. You were the wrong side of the road and you hit him and kept going. Okay. Where did this happen? Between Muddyford and Ilfricken. Between where? Muddyford. I'm, I'm, I'm not Muddyford, I'm not... I'm yeah, not Muddyford. Muddyford. Yeah, that's between Barnstable and Ilfricken. Between Barnstable and where? Ilfricken. Oh, yeah. I'm, 
here. I'm not familiar with that at all. Where, where, where am I called then? Well, you, you've called the Barnstable Police Department. Yeah. Uh, where are you calling from? Ilfiken. <laughs> You're not local and you can't be because Ilfiken is the next town on from Muddyford. So you've called the Barnstable Police Department yeah. in Massachusetts. Massachusetts? Yes, Massachusetts. Sorry, I'll, there's no way you can help me then, is there? Uh, I better get where, the where, where exactly are you calling from? England? Yeah. Well, it, it's a different town. So this one, it is quite a bit different than the others. The caller absolutely had a legitimate reason for calling the police, but the problem with it was she called police in the entirely wrong country. This person likely looked up on Google the name of her town and police department and then hit the call button when she found that police department. This connected her with the police department here in the United States when she was calling from England. It's an honest mistake. Something like that can happen from time to time. But that is a pretty large gap between the areas. And even though there is that large gap, as I mentioned, I believe the dispatcher was a bit off with his estimated six-hour response time. I think flying some officers over would take a bit more time than that. And this last call, I 100% have played it on the show before. This goes way back to the very first episode, but it's definitely something worth playing again. It's got a little bit of everything in it. Fire rescue. Yes, Okay, what's the address that we need to come to? All right, me. Your address, sir? 4220 Winford, baby. Texas Avenue and Rio Grande. I'm sorry, it's 4220, 4220 Winford? 4220. 4220, 4220 Winford, sir? Yes. Okay, and what's going on there? That shit happened yesterday, and you motherfuckers trying to put my ass in jail. It's okay. not understanding what's going on. Okay, do you need medical attention? Yes. What, what is wrong? I don't know. I ain't no goddamn doctor. Okay, sir, I'm trying to help you. Well, help um, me send me some out here. What the hell? What's the hold up? Sir, what is, are you feeling pain? What is the problem? I'm crazy as hell. Uh, so do you need us? I don't know what I need. Sheriff's office, doctor. are you on the line? Yes, we are. Do you need us to go with you? He said uh, somebody hit him. He is hurt. I ain't had my goddamn medicine this morning. I ain't got no medicine. I went to the fucking hospital. And the doctor got mad because I told him that uh, the white boy used to fuck my mama a long time ago. Sir, are you in pain somewhere or what is it? Yes, I got headaches in my leg and everything. I've been in a fucking fight. So you need you want the paramedics to come and check you, correct? Well, I thought you were getting. What the hell going on? Sir, you need to calm down and talk to me. I am trying to help you and I'm trying to send the paramedics, but I need to understand what the problem is. I don't know what the problem is. Okay, but you're feeling head pain, is that correct? I've been, yes, I've been injured. I've been hit on the head and everything else. How else do a motherfucker be a All right, when, when when did that happen? Yesterday. Damn. My head is hurting. You gonna send somebody out here or you gonna fuck around on the phone? Sir, I have no problem sending you help, okay? The paramedics will come and they'll check you. How old are you? I'm 62 years old. I retired from Diamond Christ. Okay, and are you in Millennium Point Apartments? Yes. What I apartment mean, number are you in? What's going on down there, ma'am? Sir, I am trying to help you. What apartment number are you in? What, but shit, my head is hurting. You tell Can you me, tell, tell me, me what apartment number my... you're in? What? What apartment number are you in? I ain't no goddamn apartment. Are what you in where? Millennium like Point Apartments? Motherfucker, what's wrong with your ass? How much schooling have you had? Sir, are you in Millennium Point Apartments? I told you that. Okay, what, what apartment number are Whatever. you in? What apartment number are you in? I ain't no goddamn apartment. It's a town. House. 
Okay, and what kind of medical history do you have, sir? I don't know. Let them check it out. I ain't no fucking doctor. I ain't no nurse either. Okay. You get anything else you want to know? That's how it's been since you What's before. your name? I'm Reverend Lowdown. And what's the phone number that you're calling from? I don't know what it is. I, I gave you the goddamn address. That's enough. Are you? Is your phone number 407-883-5636? Well, if you know the fucking number, why are you ask me? Because I need to confirm it with you, sir. All right, you got it. Do you not have an apartment number? I ain't got no god. I don't live in no goddamn apartment. I live in a townhouse, motherfucker. Okay, so. Yeah, we still. Do you, uh, sir? Do you have a townhouse number? Forty two twenty, motherfucker. That's okay. So we with. definitely need you to go with us. We're on our way. Okay. I'll let them know. Sir, stay on the phone with the sheriff's office, okay? Do you need to talk to him, SO? I'm going to try. Okay. Thank you. Sir? Hello? Yes. The guy that hit you, is he still there? Hell yeah, yeah. He lives over here, right? Quality running dope house right next door to me. Is he white, black, or Hispanic? I don't know what color he is. You call him what you want to call him. What does he look to you? Why? I don't know. He looked like one of Jesus' children. He looked what, like what? One of Jesus' children. Okay, what's his skin color? I don't know. Okay. I don't see no color. Do you know what color clothes he's wearing? I don't know. The motherfucker in the house. Okay, so we have somebody come to you, okay? All right. Goodbye. All right. I don't know how much of an explanation is needed with that. We get difficult callers from time to time. I know just about any dispatcher would be frustrated with someone like this calling, but sitting back and listening to it again over three years since I heard it the first time, well, it's just pretty funny hearing it. I really hope that good old Reverend Lowdown got the help he needed. After all, just like the apparent suspect in his call, he too is one of Jesus' children. That's going to do it for this one. I know it's a shorter episode, and I know there's been a little gap in the episodes, but I'm back now, and we'll be continuing with the regular weekly episodes, just like normal. And for a bonus, look out in the next couple days for a follow-up episode I recorded with Bob Mata from Defense Diaries. It'll be us talking about the episode I did a while back called Johnny and Lisa. If you haven't heard it, or just want to better familiarize yourself with it, you should definitely go back and have a listen before the chat with me and Bob is put out. For Music City 911, I'm Brandon, and y'all have a good one.